So far in this course, we've learned a lot of different skills and a lot of different functions of 1, 2, 3D design. But something I think is important is to learn how to really put them all together. So I would suggest finding something around your house that you might want to actually recreate in 1, 2, 3D design. I've actually chosen this case for my glasses. So I think it's a good example. Uh, one, it's kind of got an extrusion looking cut around here. But as you'll also notice, it's very curvy. So maybe that would be a loft. In the end, we need to actually split it open and shell it out. And then in the end, let's actually go about making some hinges that would be interlocking, which I think is one of the cool functions of 3D printing, making little, little bits that would actually be quite difficult otherwise. So I would recommend first to starting by making just a simple dimension drawing. So I made the, the square dimensions here of, of what I'm working with. Another thing that you'll notice is that this case is symmetrical about its, about its center. So if we can make one half, we can make the other just by mirroring it. So let's start by getting the basic shape of this down, kind of this extrusion cut. I don't think we'll do it yet, but we'll get the sketch out there. That'll give us some scale and, and give us a basis to work off of. So let's go to the top because we're going to be sketching on this plane. And I'm going to start with a rectangle. Alright, so for my measurements, I've measured that it's 160 millimeters wide. So divided by 2, that's 80. The height, or the depth, is 70 millimeters. Press enter a couple times. So now let's go about giving this thing its shape. So I'm going to radius this corner over here with a fillet. Let's just drag it till we think it looks good. Okay. Actually going to do another one down here. And I think that looks just about like this. All right. So now we've got half of one half of it. And this little pill is going to actually give us the option to mirror our drawing about which line, this one. I didn't select the sketch entities. <laughs> oh, excuse me, so I went in the wrong order here. So let's just undo. Mirror this. So make sure to chase these lines all the way around. All right. So now we have a pretty good looking case. So before we extrude the, the true shape of this thing, I think that would actually make kind of a blocky shape. I want to do a loft to establish the curved nature of this piece. So what I'm going to do is use some ellipses and first sketch them out flat and then rotate them 90 degrees to get them in posi into position. Now make sure that you're not actually editing this sketch and adding to it because then everything's going to be stuck together. So make sure you're clicking out here to start the sketch and then get things into position. So this is effectively going to be the height of my case. So that sketch is done. I want a new sketch. Now because the edge of my case isn't quite as tall, I'm not going to make this ellipse as big. Okay. So as you can see this is a little bit out of position. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and move it. Okay. Looks great to me. Now, what am I going to do here? Everything's flat, but I actually need to rotate these sideways.
90 degrees. Ninety degrees. And now I could probably copy this and just move it over here. So if we took this viewpoint, you could see that this ellipse is essentially snapped to this line. So everything looks symmetrical. Now let's go ahead and loft this. So remember if we're doing more than two shapes, we have to select three in a row. All right, so I got something here that looks kind of like a Subway sandwich roll. And now that I've got the curvature, essentially I've made the top and bottom of my case. I want to cut it out. So the thing about having a shape in the middle of this solid is that you can only extrude cut one way. I actually want to go through the entire thing. So what I think would be best to do is just actually move this thing down so that my sketch is on one side. So I'm going to select both of these. Since they're two separate sketches, I want to make sure they get together. want to do an intersection cut. As it goes through, it's only going to keep what actually matched the original solid as well as the new sketch. Okay, so what I've got I think looks pretty good. Now if you're getting annoyed by all these sketches, they don't do you much good anyways. So if you drag across them, anything you touch from the bottom right is selected, push delete, and it's gone. So now that we have this case looking about like we want it to, I want to split it into two pieces so that I can shell it out, and then I actually have a functional opening case. So what I'm going to do here is select this front face and draw a line straight across it where I would actually like to split this. Looks about good. Now, I want a little bit more case on the bottom than the top, just because I think that's what looks best. Now we're going to use a new command called split solid. So the body to split is here. Splitting entity is this line. And you can see when you have a red plane, it's figured out where it's going to split. So you can do this with a curved line or anything, but the thing to note is that it's actually going to split perpendicular to the plane that you started on. So it's 90 degrees from this. If I press enter, you'll see here I have a parting line, two separate pieces, and I can drag them apart. So I want to shell these out, but before I shell them out, I think I need to make sure that I radius these edges so that when I radius the edges, it doesn't cut into my shell. So I'm going to go around here. Select my bits. Now if something if this make sure to get every segment. If something's too small, you're going to have to zoom in. Looks like I missed it. Forgot to hold shift. Okay, we got everything. Let's try to fill it here. And I'll say six millimeters. Okay, looks good to me. Now I'm gonna go and go ahead and do the other side.
fill it. Another six millimeters. Looks pretty good to me. Press enter. Okay. So now we've got two halves. I want to shell them out. If you're using strong and flexible plastic, you can go as thin as 0.7 millimeters usually. But I find around one millimeter is where it starts to actually become a decently rigid structure. So with something as large as a glasses case, one millimeter I think is a great number. So let's make sure and do it to the other side. And you can see here, if I put in four millimeters, you can see the shell thickness changing. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so we've got a functional glasses case, but I want a hinge. I think having a hinge would make this actually fun to 3D print. 